I'm Mike, and today it's time to ask the question. How is it that good people make morally bankrupt decisions over and over again? More specifically, how is it that the majority of people eat animals when they claim to love animals? If you ask somebody that eats meat, would you rather that no animal died in the making of your food? I'm sure that pretty much everybody's gonna say yes unless they're a psychopath. Yet 95% of people eat meat and about 99% of people eat other cruelty-filled animal products. Yet they would probably view themselves as a good person. I know I viewed myself as a good person when I ate meat back in the day. We can glean some answers from the Milgram experiment. Here is Stanley Milgram. When I learn of incidents such as the massacre of millions of men, women, and children perpetrated by the Nazis in World War II, how is it possible, I ask myself, that ordinary people who are courteous and decent in everyday life can act callously, inhumanely, without any limitations of conscience? The problem I wanted to study was a little different. It went a little bit further. It was the issue of authority. Under what conditions would a person obey authority who commanded actions that went against conscience. And now for his experiment, stay focused because it gets a little bit complicated. Volunteers were told they were taking part in scientific research to improve memory. Will you open those and tell me which of you is which, please? Teacher. Learn. Teacher. Separated by a screen, the teacher would ask the learner questions in a word game and administer an electric shock when the answer was incorrect. He was told to increase the voltage with each wrong answer. Cloud, horse, rock, house. Answer, wrong. 150 volts. Answer, horse. Participants didn't know that the learner was really an actor and the so-called shocks harmless. Notice how it becomes okay to continue once the responsibility is shifted to the researcher. Dan and I, I'm not going to kill that man there. Eh? I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. All right, next one. Slow. The real answers come when the subject approaches the potentially lethal voltage of 450 volts, which on the switchboard is past, quote, intense shock, extreme intensity shock, and danger severe shock. Experiment, that's all. Get me out of here. Get me out of here, please. Continue, please. Go right on. The experiment requires you continue, teacher. Please continue. So what percent of people do you think administered the full 450 volt shock? Well, they took a group of 40 psychiatrists, asked them the same question, and they thought that it would be a little over one-tenth of one percent. But in reality, it turned out to be 65% of subjects. And this meta-analysis of similar studies found that yes, about two thirds of people will administer the maximum shock. So this means that the vast majority of people are capable of doing horrible things under the right conditions. This doesn't mean that humans aren't capable of doing amazing things and great things, it just means that when they are subject to certain social pressures, they will do horrible things. So it becomes easy to imagine what more indirect wrongs a person might be capable of when there's not just somebody right in front of you and a button to shock them, but maybe just a cash register and some far off animal. But you might be thinking, weren't the studies done on authority? There's not some authority telling you that you have to eat meat. Is there? Because I don't want to argue with you. What it, would you like if someone ate you? <laughs> I, no, I wouldn't. Well then why should I eat this poor harmless animal? <laughs> okay, but do you understand what I'm saying? We didn't kill this animal. It's good for your body. Your parents are your authority when you're growing up, and not to mention also doctors who are constantly telling people to eat meat and other dairy products despite only having 24 hours of nutritional training. And don't let me forget religious authority figures. Good for your body. Jesus created animals for us to eat. Alana. Yeah. Now Jesus makes animals? I thought that was God's job. So if at any point in your life you're able to make the connection between animals and your plate, that was probably beaten out of you by some authority figure along the way. And those general influences as well as social inertia are why, quote, ordinary people simply doing their jobs and without any particular hostility on their part can become agents in a terrible destructive process. 
And going back to Milgram's experiment, people continued after the responsibility was taken off of them, which is exactly what the animal agriculture industry does by doing all the killing for you, by taking the responsibility off of the consumer, doing the dirty work, killing the animals, doing all the processing. Another completely different thing that drives people to eat animals and animal products, even though they are morally against it, is simply that we are animals. We have some very advanced machinery that drives us to secure calories. And by telling somebody to go vegan, you are essentially telling them to surrender a large portion of their calories. This creates an illogical, animalistic, emotional response that would certainly not happen if you challenge some other area of their life that didn't involve calories. And that's why it's important to put emphasis on fake meats and cheeses when people are first going vegan despite whole foods being healthier. All right, moving on. Vegans are always trying to get people to eat more morally, more ethically. And I have a thought experiment that could be useful to vegans and also works for other people as well. Think about this question. Do you support sweatshops? The answer is probably no. You probably don't support sweatshops, but look around at all of your clothing, maybe even what you're wearing now, and can you say for a fact that that was not made in a sweatshop? It could be useful to examine what is going on in your head when you are buying clothing or other products that may or may not be unethically produced. What are you thinking? Are you trying to put it out of your head entirely? Are you thinking, oh, maybe those women would be worse off if they weren't working in a sweatshop, or maybe just that everybody else is doing it, so it's okay, or you're not thinking about it because of that. So what are some of the mental devices that you use to do some maybe unethical purchasing if, if you do do that? And I think it's important to understand how that works within yourself so that you can better understand what people are doing to justify eating animal products, and of course, just so you can become a better person as well. In the end, we are a society of mostly good people perpetuating something which is absolutely horrible, also known as animal agriculture. And it essentially happens through authority figures sort of forming and molding people throughout their lifetime till it just becomes completely normal. And it also has to do with how we're animals and taking away the calorie source that comes from animal products, the cheeses and meat, can be threatening to people. There is a positive message at the end of this though, and that is in Milgram's alternate experiments, where he had two additional teachers that were actually actors that refused to continue giving the shocks. In these experiments, only 10% of people went all the way to 440 volts. So as a vegan, you can simply lead by example. And that is how vegans wake people up to the reality of their food choices. And that is how you make change. All right, that's it for today. Let me know if there are any other reasons that I missed of why good people eat bad things. And thank you for watching. Thank you, Kuita, this is not